We're on watch for dangerous waves following a powerful 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake. It struck near Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula north of Japan, prompting Japan to issue a tsunami advisory. A tsunami warning is out for Japan's Pacific Coast and Hawaii, and sirens began blaring in Hawaii. People were told to move to higher ground here in California. A tsunami advisory was issued. We are under a tsunami advisory. This is a live look at Honolulu right now, where it's just after 6 p.m. We're expecting the mayor of Honolulu to hold a news conference sometime tonight. If a tsunami does hit the island, it's expected at 7:10 Hawaii time, which is just after 10 o'clock our time, so just over an hour to go. And I understand in other parts of Hawaii, they are shutting down roads and bridges to protect people from high rising waters. All right, this is the situation here in Santa Monica. You're looking at the Santa Monica Pier there with the amusement park still going strong. All seems calm there. We spoke to seismologist uh, Dr. Lucy Jones about the earthquake today and the potential aftermath. She says Hawaii could see water, see water surge between three to 10 feet with California seeing being significantly less of an impact. It can be pretty substantial. So we need to remember that when they, these wave heights are how much sea level goes up. It's not a crashing wave like you can imagine from the beach or something. It's rather a, a sudden increase in sea level. The prediction for California is that the waves will start arriving about 1 a.m. Okay. That is also the time of high tide. However, the maximum height is much, much lower than in Hawaii. Uh, the mm -hmm. largest for the region is in Santa Barbara, where it's predicted to be between one and two feet. Um, for, for all the rest of Southern California, it's less than one foot. All right, we're going to go now to meteorologist Adam Kruger with more on what's happening now. And when she says there are not going to be big crashing waves, yeah. you can picture that moment uh, with the tsunami in Fukushima in Japan where that water just came through Fukushima with houses and right. cars. So it was really, as she says, a rising tide that went inland. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just the ocean going up and then it would appear to like create waves once it gets onto land, starts crashing into things and things of that nature. But yeah, uh, water going up. She talked about uh, a lot of what I have to show you on a map right here that for a lot of the California coastline, I'll get out of the way so you can see uh, the arrival time and also the tsunami height, the max tsunami height. She talked about a lot of the coastline, <clears throat> locally anyways, with the height being less than, uh, the rise being less than one foot. That's what we show there for LA and some of the surrounding areas. She did mention uh, Santa Barbara, potentially a little bit more. Notice Port, Port San Luis, uh, maybe two to 3.8 foot rise. So that is, uh, you know, it's not nothing. That is a, a pretty good rise there. And then the arrival time, yes, starting around 1 a.m. here locally. And that does coincide with, as she said, high tide. And keep in mind, the impacts from tsunamis and, and the kind of the variation in the ocean can last for uh, for several hours. So it's not just, you know, right when it begins and that's it. Also want to point out that just to, to put this in a different way of phrasing it, widespread inundation is not expected, uh, but it is recommended. The bulletins say recommended to stay off the beach and out of harbors and marinas. There can be uh, damage in harbors. Uh, sometimes surging water into and out of harbors can cause boats and docks to detach. So that's like an extra thing to watch out for during all this. But again, you see the max tsunami height locally around or less than one foot.